Vermeil is a plot-filled, ugly, disgusting, lonely demon who can destroy and annihilate a whole city with one scream. She is sealed in a worn-out grimoire by a white glowing veiled woman from the ancient times for safety purposes. After more than 500 years, she is summoned by a student to become his familiar, so he would not repeat another year in the academy. As a sign of gratitude, Vermeil agrees to become his familiar, making her known as the first human familiar in the history of the academy. However, things will shamble upon revealing what lies behind Vermeil's true identity and tragic past. At the Royal Ordija Magic Academy, an old professor talks to a freshman named Alto Goldfield to inform him that he failed his summoning exam after gaining a score of 0 over 100. Despite his perfect scores in all of his other subjects, there is still a high possibility that he will repeat another school year. The professor told him that if he cannot form a contract with any familiar by the following day, he will be given a final failing grade, and there is no room for an extension at all. Before long, Alto meets with his childhood friend Lilia Cutelfight, who is secretly craving to taste Alto's cream puff. She is shocked and bothered to find out that Alto may be held back a year in the academy despite his perfect performance in every other class. Alto tells her that he still has until the next day, and will give all that he can to have it done in his one last chance. That said, he didn't waste any time and he headed directly to the library for help. Suddenly, a book falls off the shelf and hits his head, which is a regular Tuesday among magical theme anime shows because this is what you will see in every grimoire scene. To add insult to injury, it is an old summoning book, making it the most incredible plot twist in just a few minutes. As expected, Alto takes the grimoire home, and he follows the intricate ancient ritual written in the old ugly disgusting dust-filled summoning book. The summoning spell activates, and Alto offers his liquid to quench the thirst of the familiar sealed inside that is about to appear before him. Summoning is successfully completed, and a demon girl with massive plot named Vermeil appears in her full-time variety show. She attempts to develop plot with him. Yes! 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 But he refuses because Alto believes he is a man of culture, so he wants to reach his legal age before diving deeper into Vermeil's floodgate. Alto offers to form a familiar contract with her, which she willingly accepts. Vermeil is aware that he is the reason why she gets out of the ceiling grimoire after years of waiting in despair, like your message in the inbox of your crush that hasn't been seen in the past several years. In return, she kisses Alto and sucks out all of his pure concentrated mana. After some petty talks, Alto makes her put on some clothes to protect himself from breaking his man of culture vow. Nonetheless, Alto is confused as to why a demon like her would choose to serve him as a familiar because the demons they have learned about in history have always destroyed humans. She then reveals to him that she had been sealed away in the book for many years, so she is showing him her sincere gratitude for setting her free. The next day, Alto introduces Vermeil to his old strict grumpy dream-destroying professor as his familiar. Apparently, she hides her horns and tail using her concealing spell to pose as a human. At first, he doesn't believe that Vermeil is his familiar because there are no records of humans being one. However, when she shows him her familiar crest, his professor is forced to accept it as valid evidence. Lilia gets jealous of Vermeil as she watches them from a distance because she doesn't want to have any rival with her greatest love of all time. During class, Vermeil sits on Alto's lap like a certified MILF, showing him affection like nobody else. The teacher tells him that such behavior is not appropriate which makes Lilia feel happy because she wants Vermeil out of her sight. However, Vermeil points out that many students have their familiars sitting with them because it is part of the academy's rules of living life alongside a familiar. The teacher is left speechless, and Lilia has trouble accepting the situation. After class, Lilia confronts Alto, telling him that she doesn't like Vermeil, and challenging him to a familiar duel. If she wins Vermeil will stay away from Alto but if Alto wins she will obey one command from him. They have gone to a platform in the sky, and their duel is broadcast to all the students inside the academy. Lilia summons her familiar Sylphide, a high-class wind spirit, which surprises Vermeil. Lilia combines her wind magic with her familiar's power, and together they unleash a powerful attack against Alto. Seeing how dangerous the attack is, Vermeil steps in front of Alto and takes the attack head-on. When the dust clears, Vermeil is completely unharmed, which proves how much of a savage she is. Vermeil retaliates and uses magic, which makes Lilia reach climax for the first time until she concedes defeat. Since Alto won, he commands Lilia to be friends with Vermeil. Later that day, Vermeil tells Alto that Lilia is in love with him. 
However, being the inexperienced and sensitive disgusting lonely loser he is, Alto refuses to believe her. Not long after, Vermeil kisses him to replenish her mana, and she tells Alto that she needs to have more, or else she will disappear. She then bent over and asked him once again, saying that there were more effective ways to replenish her mana. Suddenly, she pinpoints his Excalibur, saying that she can extract some of his pure mana from it. Alto stops her and says kissing him will be enough, and there's no need to escalate things further. The next day, everyone seems to be looking at Vermeil and Alto as they walk inside the academy. Alto tells Vermeil to keep a low profile so they don't stand out, but Vermeil's massive cannonballs are simply too big not to catch everyone's attention. Suddenly, a familiar rampages down their path like a madman. Fortunately, Vermeil stops the dragon with a single flick of her finger, sending it flying like the team rocket when they blast off from their defeat. Alto knows that everyone is staring at his familiar's massive balloons, which explains why all the boys in the academy are acting like wild baboons. That said, Alto scolds her for drawing too much attention from the crowd. Before long, the headmaster of the academy welcomes the students to their second year. Alto is delighted to be able to make it, despite the challenges he had in the past. Lilia, on the other hand, is still jealous at how Vermeil clings to Alto like a leech. After school, Lilia invites herself to walk home with Alto and Vermeil, so she can keep an eye on them. Not long after, they are confronted by two students, the owner of the dragon that Vermeil sent flying and his big brother Rex. They come over to get even with Vermeil because what happened to their dragon familiar tarnishes their notorious formidable reputation. However, while they are distracted, Alto sneaks behind them and traps them in a crystal cage. Rex summons his familiar, and breaks free from the restriction created by Alto. After that, he commands his dinosaur familiar to destroy them. Vermeil releases Alto's mana, allowing him to unleash a far stronger crystal magic attack that defeats Rex easily. When they return home, Vermeil asks what Alto wants in life. She offers to make him rich like Elon Musk, which is everyone's dream. However, since this is a Japanese anime, he tells Vermeil that all he wants is to be the greatest mage of all time. He explains that in their world there are four ranks of mage's apprenticeship, bronze, silver, and gold but he aims to go further beyond to become a platinum ranked mage. Vermeil feels happy for him, so she decides to help him reach his dream and promises to help him achieve it no matter what. The next day, the two along with Lilia meet their friends Marx Parston and Cheryl Iridescence. Marx is an untalented waste of space noble young lad, while Cheryl is his beautiful mysterious classmate slash personal maid. As expected from a useless noble brat, Marx is extremely impressed that Alto defeated a fifth year student, and he starts declaring himself his rival. Their teacher appears and tells them that the headmaster wants to see them. Apparently, the headmaster informs them that one of them will be the class representative. To decide who would it be, he gives them a special task, which is retrieving the fairy flower from the dangerous forest. Whoever can retrieve the said item successfully will be the class representative for the whole school year. Mark summons his familiar, which is a beetle named Francois. He rushes off into the forest as if he has all the information he needs to know about the area. Not long after, Marx is attacked by a man-eating Victreeble wannabe plant monster, so Cheryl decides to stay behind to help him. On the other hand, Alto Vermeil and Lilia continue to look for the flower and see it on the top of a rocky hill. However, the way to the top of the mountain is guarded by a sleeping three-headed dog called Cerberus. Lilia has an invisibility potion, and she plans to use it to pass through the Cerberus without being noticed. Alto is worried that it would still be able to smell her, but Lilia points out that it has a cold so she should be able to get by. She takes the potion and becomes invisible. However, her clothes are not affected by the potion. That said, Lilia becomes stressed out about removing her clothes with Alto around, but she has no other choice, or else her expensive potion will be wasted for nothing. As Lilia approaches the Cerberus, Alto is reminded that it is a competition that he participated in as well. Vermeil also tells him that she can easily defeat the Cerberus, but in return, she needs to suck out more pure mana from Alto's body. Lilia tries to sneak past the Cerberus, but not all of its three heads have colds. Unfortunately, the unsick head has detected her, instantly putting her life in grave danger. Alto distracts the Cerberus and tells Lilia to get the flower. As the Cerberus charges towards Alto, Vermeil leaps in midair and unleashes her demonic powers, defeating the Cerberus using a one-hit attack. Suddenly, there is a great explosion, and soon enough Lilia is able to grab the fairy flower. She then takes the flower and go back down the rocky hill. 
Then, she admits defeat and offers to give the fairy flower to Alto. Unfortunately, her invisibility potion wears off, and she becomes embarrassed that she engages her greatest love in a plot-staring contest. She drops the flower, and it gets blown away by a gust of wind, making Cheryl the one to complete the task successfully. The following day, on their way to the academy, Vermeil enjoys eating a creamy crepe for the first time. She told Alto that it was the most delicious creamy food that she had ever shoved into her mouth, next to Alto's creamy stick. As expected, having been sealed away for hundreds of years, she never had the chance to experience modern food. Meanwhile, the students look up above as the particular group of students forms their dragons like military jet planes in the sky. All the students admire Chris Westland, the leader of the Dragon Riders, who is also known to be a formidable student in the academy. Vermeil asks Alto who they are, and he explains that they are the Dragon Riders, which is the same club that Rex, the one who attacked them, belongs to. Not long after, they meet up with Marx, Cheryl, and Lilia. Marx explains just how incredible Chris is. It turns out that aside from being the leader of the Dragon Riders, she is an executive on the student council, and also one of the Academy's seven gold rank students. Alto is amazed that she is already at gold rank at her age. He wishes he could be like the student council president, who is said to be close to platinum rank. Vermeil tells him that it is possible, while suffocating him with her massive balloons. Lilia quickly pushes her away, and the two argue over Alto. As usual, Lilia vents out her frustrations about Vermeil. That said, Lilia talks to Cheryl about her thoughts, revealing that she wonders if Vermeil is even a human. She then recalls how she defeated the Cerberus with a single blow. Lilia is suspicious of Vermeil and swears to expose her no matter what. Cheryl tells that Lilia must really like Alto so much, and this causes her to panic and be flustered. After seeing her reaction, Cheryl encourages her to confess her feelings to Alto to settle everything once and for all. Meanwhile, in the boys' changing room Vermeil makes a scene after watching Alto change his clothes. Alto is embarrassed, and Lilia is jealous that Vermeil got to peek at Alto while changing clothes, which she expresses as something she desires so badly. Alto tells them that they need to keep a low profile, so they don't get in trouble with the student council. However, Vermeil tells him that she will just beat them all, and that Alto will reach gold rank in no time. As they walk, the student council appears before them. The trio quickly gets out of the way as they pass by. Chris glares at Vermeil with her criminally offensive bombastic side eye, wondering who she is. Later on, Vermeil sneaks into Alto's shower and attempts to play with him once again. Elsewhere, Rex gets beat up by Chris when she finds out he was defeated by Alto. She is embarrassed for him to be part of the Dragon Riders as his familiar is just a dinosaur and not a dragon. She continues to beat him and expels him from the Dragon Riders Club. Alto hears Rex was sent to the infirmary, so he decides to visit him. Rex's brother on the other hand blames Alto for being the reason why Rex was expelled from the Dragon Riders. That said, Alto completely realizes what happened. Soon after, Alto heads up to the dueling platform with Vermeil where at the top they are to face the infamous Chris. Chris gives Alto a chance to back out from the duel, but they are determined to fight with all they can to prove their point. Chris summons her familiar. Behold, her ferocious dragon appears before them. On the other hand, Alto calls Vermeil and she supercharges his mana giving a glow after getting a blow from Vermeil's mana boosting ability. As Lilia watches with anger and jealousy, Alto launches his crystal attack, impressing his opponent greatly. However, Chris is able to stop it easily with a single blast of her devastating flame magic. She fires again and Vermeil is forced to block the fatal blow. As the flames subsided, Vermeil was okay, but had taken some serious damage. Chris continues with a rapid barrage of fireballs, and Vermeil continues to block all the blasts, and drops to the ground. Alto tries to counterattack with his crystals, but Chris shatters them all instantly. Chris is impressed by Alto's skill, but more impressed with how Vermeil can take her attacks head-on. Vermeil gives Alto even more of her power, allowing him to launch a huge barrage of crystals at his opponent. The attack lands and causes a huge explosion. Alto is relieved, thinking it is over, but Chris rises riding on her dragon and fear triggers all over his body. She boasts that the dragons are the ultimate beings, and all others are inferior. She rains fireballs down from above, while Vermeil continues to shield Alto. Meanwhile, Vermeil tells Alto to build up his golden mana because she is determined to prove her wrong. That said, Vermeil supercharges Alto again making him reach the climax of his current status. Chris launches a strong attack from above, and Alto intercepts it by launching a massive crystal attack. Chris shatters it, but she loses sight of Alto in the process. Using the shards of crystal, Vermeil leaps up to Chris, and before she can even react, 
Alto points a crystal to her throat causing him to win the duel. All of the students cheer for Alto, and he quickly rises to stardom, especially with the ladies, causing Lilia to become even more jealous. Before long, one of the academy instructors, Professor Obsidian, appeared and told Alto not to take duels so lightly because they can be seriously dangerous if not cautious enough. He congratulates Alto on his win, and leaves as all the ladies follow him like chicks that are following their mother hen. Alto asks Lilia if she is also into Professor Obsidian. Hearing that, Lilia felt bad that Alto is too numb and dumb not being able to realize that she is actually into him. Later that day, Rex meets Chris and he is surprised she is doing her own chores. She apologizes to him and he is shocked to hear such words from her. That said, Rex takes over the chores and the two make up later that night. On the other hand, Vermeil tries to seduce Alto again. However, he says that one should only kiss someone they love, so she says that she loves him, which gave Alto butterflies in his stomach. The next day, Alto seems to be too worried while Vermeil appears refreshed like a flower in full bloom after getting watered. Alto remembers Vermeil telling him she loves him, and turns completely red. That said, he goes to see Professor Obsidian and asks if a demon could fall in love with a human. Professor Obsidian tells him that demons only want humans for their mana, and he should not worry about that much because he is an ugly, disgusting, lonely loser who don't even know how to riz a girl. Emotional damage! During dinner, Alto awkwardly confronts Vermeil asking if she only loves him for his mana. Vermeil then proves herself to him by kissing him without draining his golden mana. Then, she tells Alto that he should try to kiss her, but he can't bring himself to do it. The next day, Alto was happy having resolved his feelings toward Vermeil. He apologizes to Professor Obsidian for his strange question about demons, but the professor is just happy to see that Alto is feeling a lot better. Later on, Professor Obsidian meets with a female student in private, ready to develop plot with her. Professor Obsidian tells her that she loves him and he embraces her. However, he brings out his big suspicious-looking syringe that she inserted in the girl's floodgate causing her to climax. Soon after, the girl is later discovered frozen in her room, as if Elsa got mad and told the guards not to open up the gate. The rumors of this incident spread, and fortunately the girl was rescued. She was, however, left in a coma. On the other hand, the student council was tasked to investigate the incident, so Vice President Ryuga Shinoji and Executive Jessica Schwarz did their job. The two discuss the incident, revealing that the recent victim is the third incident of a student being put into coma. Meanwhile, Alto measures Vermeil's vital statistics because in their class they were tasked to write a report about their familiars. Vermeil removes her plot armor for Alto to measure her big balloons, that are way bigger than their two heads combined. Little did they know, while they are doing the measuring game, Lilia's familiar spies on them. It turns out that Lilia is hiding outside Alto's room with Cheryl. Lilia tasks her familiar to report what it saw. After knowing about what the two were doing, Lilia felt so crazily mad that she could explode Mount Everest any moment. Using another invisibility potion and a copy of Alto's key, she leaves her clothes with Cheryl and sneaks inside. She unlocks Alto's door and successfully enters his room. Alto walks straight right up to her causing her to panic, but he just grabs the book in his search for the right one. Alto unknowingly touches Lilia's plot, causing her to reach climax in no time. Alto completes his report after listing all the things that Vermeil likes such as sweets, but Vermeil adds to the list by writing down her master's name. It turns out that his favorite of them all is his master's strong surge of mana that gives a unique sensation inside her body. Meanwhile, Chris and her dragon are defeated by a seemingly possessed Rex, and his mutated dinosaur familiar that looks like a Walmart version of Daenerys Targaryen's dragon. There is a flashback to when Rex first summoned his familiar as an egg. He is overjoyed at its size and it even attracts the attention of a young Chris back then. They bond over it and even become friends. Back in the present time, Alto and Vermeil are shopping for groceries. The sweets attract Vermeil, but Alto tells her that they're short on money. Vermeil is devastated and she starts sulking on the floor. She then starts throwing tantrums like a child, who is not given her favorite candy. Alto gives in and tells her that he will buy her one dessert, making Vermeil feel overjoyed. In return, she kisses him in front of all the other students in the market, which causes Alto to be embarrassed. Vermeil is confused about what the problem is because she didn't even drain his mana. Suddenly, they are interrupted by Rex's brother, who is in a panic and he begs them for help. Elsewhere, Chris continues to get beaten up by Rex. She tries to fight back, firing her fireballs at him, but it did not work. Suddenly, there is a huge explosion, but Rex withstands the flames. As his body starts to mutate, Rex summons a pillar of rocks that sends Chris flying in midair. 
He even steps on her face, and he taunts her to fight back, but Chris begs him to stop. When Alto and Vermeil arrive, they tell him to let her go. He throws Chris to the other side and decides to get even with Alto for beating him. Before Alto rushes to Chris, she tells him to run because Rex's power goes berserk. All of a sudden, Vermeil recognizes something familiar about Rex's strange mana. Rex summons his familiar, which has also mutated. On the other hand, Alto's hand glows as Vermeil prepares for a fight. However, the student council president Alina Kimberlite arrives, and she quickly activates her sword familiar. She delivers magnificently multiple slashes on Rex and his dinosaur, knocking them out and destroying their mutation. Alina checks up on Chris, but feels ashamed that she lost to Rex. Rex gets back up, but he is too injured to make any further moves, so he falls over right away. Seeing that, Chris rushes over to him as he lies unconscious on the ground. Vermeil, on the other hand, is still curious about Rex's strange power. Meanwhile, Alina asks Vermeil if she has knowledge about what could have possibly happened to Rex and his dinosaur familiar. Nonetheless, Vermeil denies knowing anything about it at all but Alina seems suspicious of Vermeil from the very beginning. Soon after, the student council conducted a meeting noting that Rex's incident was the fifth incident in the academy. They suspect that someone working in the academy is responsible for using drugs or black magic on the students. Chris can't bear the report and storms out of the office. Jessica is confused as to why Chris cares so much about Rex. That said, Ruga explains that she hates it when people mess with things that belongs to her because she is a certified tsundere. Meanwhile, Alto and Lily are notified about their upcoming exam to reach the bronze rank. Alto is distracted but Lilia reminds him how important it is for them to prepare for the exam as student of the Magic Academy. Vermeil tells Alto that she is tired and she wants to go back to the dorm, so he can stay to study with Lilia. Alto is worried about her because she has been acting differently ever since their encounter with Rex. Lilia, on the other hand, takes the opportunity to be alone with Alto. Apparently, she uses their study session as an excuse to have Alto all to herself. Elsewhere, as Vermeil walks back to the dorm she meets Professor Obsidian. They have a brief talk and he is surprised to see her without Alto around. All of a sudden, Vermeil calls him out for being the one behind the incidents. As expected, Professor Obsidian pretends not to know what she is talking about. However, Vermeil mentions how she can smell low-tier demons following him around. With a dead serious tone, she tells him that he should stop whatever he's doing. Then, leaves telling him that it's too much power for a human to handle. Professor Obsidian asks if she will expose him, but Vermeil simply doesn't seem to care at all. However, she ultimately warns him with a menacing glare not to inject his demonizing liquid into Alto's body because if he will do it, she declares to rip him into shreds until she erases his very existence. At that moment, Professor Obsidian realizes what she really is, and he agrees that his demons are low tier compared to her. Vermeil continues to walk away but a paper Shinigami suddenly floats by her side. Out of nowhere, Professor Obsidian appears behind her and injects her with his syringe containing his weird liquid. She pushes him away, but she begins to feel the pain from the dark energy. Then, she begins to unleash her demonic power. Professor Obsidian watches sinisterly, hoping to obtain her and use her power to get what he wants. Elsewhere, Alto and Lilia start their study session. As Lilia tries to make her move on him, Alto feels a sharp pain as his hand begins to glow out of nowhere. Then, there is a huge explosion outside and Alto realizes Vermeil is in trouble. That said, he rushes to find her and everyone else in the academy feels and notices the surge of dark energy. The sky turns darker, and Alina rushes to the scene. However, she comes across a paper Shinigami, which she slices in half. The paper Shinigami fixes itself, and begins to talk to her as it continuously multiplies itself and joins together forming a creepy entity. The enemy says that it can't let her pass, so Alina decides to fight the creature. But after every attack she delivers, the creature is still able to regenerate itself. Meanwhile, Vermeil has transformed into an unstoppable winged demon. Professor Obsidian looks overjoyed with Vermeil unleashing a devastating wave of energy that shocks him tremendously. He uses his magic and wraps a magic chain around Vermeil's neck to control her. When Alto and Lily arrive, Professor Obsidian shows them his control over Vermeil forcing her to go down to her knees. Alto is horrified at the sight and his emotions get too mixed up. Not long after, Professor Obsidian reveals that he was the one attacking people and injecting them with demon essence to try to turn them into demons. Alto and Lily are shocked at the revelation and the thought of losing Vermeil. That said, Alto becomes enraged and a burst of energy is sent to his familiar. Vermeil suddenly breaks free from the chain and immediately attacks Professor Obsidian. 
However, Alto gets in the way and gets impaled by her huge sharp claws. Alto's tomato juice pours out everywhere, and there is a flashback to when Vermeil was sealed away. She is all alone in the dark and nothingness, until a door opens up and she meets Alto. As Alto falls to Vermeil, he transforms into a more vicious form. She attacks Professor Obsidian one more time, but she is stopped by Alto once again. He calms her down and she is brought to tears and comes back to her default form. Alto collapses while Lilia is horrified by what she just witnessed. Vermeil kisses Alto and is able to heal the hole in his chest. Professor Obsidian freaks out at the turn of events and injects himself with his weird liquid. He transforms into a hideous demon boasting that what they are witnessing is his ultimate creation. After feeding on hundreds of lower-level demons, he plans to crush Vermeil and absorb her power. He attacks with a drill-like blow but Vermeil retaliates the attack by punching back and blowing off half of his body with a single punch. Professor Obsidian is shocked at her power, and he abandons his body to make room for his escape. However, he gets blasted off by Chris, who is riding on her dragon and Vermeil jumps up to him and punches him. She knocked him back down to the ground and made his demonic body fade away. Alto regains consciousness and Lilia cries because he is thankful that Alto is okay. The monster that Alina was fighting retreats, saying they will meet again sometime. Vermeil then apologizes to Alto for hurting him, but he doesn't mind because she healed him. Things turned out okay, however, Vermeil sadly explains that she had destroyed his heart, and to heal him she gave him a demon heart, which linked their life forces together. So if one of them dies, the other one will die as well. Alto is devastated after hearing it. Not because he will die if Vermeil dies, but because his precious familiar will die with him, when she should be able to live forever as a demon. Elsewhere, Professor Obsidian is arrested and Rex wakes up from his coma with a sleeping Chris beside him. Moreover, all the other affected students woke up as well. Later on, Alto and Vermeil kiss for Alto's heart requires Vermeil's mana to function from then on. Vermeil starts acting cold toward Alto and Alto calls her out for it. She says that her monster form was her true form, so he should stay away from her. Alto gets angry and he tells her that he doesn't care about that, then, he kisses her. Vermeil is shocked and pushes him away but Alto says that he is not scared of her. He even proclaims that they will be together forever, which Vermeil agrees with. Alto becomes embarrassed and quickly runs away while Vermeil is left thinking about how Alto said that one should only kiss someone they love. Realizing that Alto loves her, she becomes flustered and instantly blushes. The next day at school, all the girls mourn over the loss of Professor Obsidian despite the fact that he is the serial maniac who tried converting students into demons. On the other hand, all the boys are also depressed because they are sad that Vermeil hasn't been coming to their class. Suddenly, a bunch of boys start confronting Alto about Vermeil not being around. What the hell is the problem with these disgusting people? Just help me spam fantasy no more because these students will no longer fantasize about people while they are studying. Alto explains to them that Vermeil is not feeling well. Elsewhere, as the sun starts to set, Lilia confronts Vermeil about her being a demon. Vermeil apologizes for hiding the truth about her true identity, and she expresses how she feels bad about Alto getting hurt because of her. Lilia then clarifies to her that she doesn't care if she is a demon or not because what she really cares about is whether she did some character development with her beloved Alto or not. After hearing that, Vermeil gets flustered as she remembers how Alto passionately kissed her. The next day, Vermeil gets a uniform to wear, but it just doesn't quite fit her, almost exposing her massive balloons. Alto is feeling a little embarrassed but he is very happy that Vermeil is back to join him in class. Somewhere unknown, in a church surrounded by dead priests' bodies, two platinum-ranked characters are shown. They are Helidor, the conveyor, and Iolite of Heaven's Will. Using one of the paper Shinigami to communicate, Iolite talks about Professor Obsidian's failure, calling him a fool. However, Helidor is showing interest in his research. One of the priests lunges out, but he is batted away by a knight familiar. Back at school, all the boys stare at Vermeil's new outfit, and the boys praise Alto for bringing her back to their class because they are too fed up with their female classmates' boring NPC looks. When they are about to start their lesson, the student council interrupts the class. Alto and Vermeil are invited to their office. This makes Alto feel worried because he thinks that they've found out that Vermeil is a demon. That said, Alto asks why they were detained when they were not doing anything wrong. To his surprise, Alina apologizes for not being able to help him during their fight against Professor Obsidian. They wanted to know more about the incident, but unfortunately, Professor Obsidian escaped from the prison. That said, they bring both of them in to find out more about the incident and everything it entails, to which Alto agrees to help. 
However, the atmosphere changes when they force Alto to reveal his secrets. They ask him if they are hiding anything from them. In an instant, they are held at a play point where if they don't tell the truth, they will go against them. Alto has no choice but to confess that Vermeil is a demon and that their life forces are intertwined together. They are shocked at the revelation because they have never heard of something like that before. Alto claims that Vermeil is not evil, and he is ready to protect her from all of them at all costs. On the other hand, Jessica thinks Vermeil is too dangerous to keep around the academy, but Alina believes in Alto's reserve and decides to help him keep his secrets. Nonetheless, Alina notes that she can easily kill Alto with her sword familiar if Vermeil goes out of control. Vermeil then asks her what she plans for them, but she simply tells them that she wants them to be their allies. After that, she invites Alto to be part of the student council because she knows that she can use them in her favor. Alto starts thinking that she just wants to keep an eye on him because she believes in the saying keep your friends close and your enemies closer. However, Alina reminds him how he was able to defeat Chris masterfully in a duel. Although suspicious of her motive, Alto accepts her offer because that is what he thinks would be the best decision for them to come out alive in that place. When his friends hear about it, they are extremely shocked. As expected from someone like Marx who has nothing to worry about all his life, he simply feels so proud of Alto. Despite the possible hidden agenda of the student council, Lilia congratulates him, and she tells him that as a reward, he can use him in all possible ways he wants. On the other hand, Alto becomes worried from that moment because there are a number of people who know Vermeil's true identity. Vermeil, however, warns Alto to be careful around the student council. She even tells him to be vigilant enough around Alina because Vermeil suspects that Alina might not be a human after all. The next day, Alto goes to attend his first council meeting along with the renowned gold level students. However, in an unexpected turn of events, Alto ends up walking in while the girls are changing their clothes. Jessica freaks out, but Alina says it was their fault for not locking the door, considering it is their office, not their changing room. The meeting continues, and Alina shows them all a piece of the paper Shinigami she fought with. Chris tries to thoroughly examine it with her knowledge, but Alina tells her that it would be a waste of time. She then explains that it contains such an advanced magical formula. Moreover, not even a team of gold-ranked expert mages was able to decipher how the magic was formulated with it. That said, they end up with a conclusion that their enemy is at platinum rank, a level that is way out of their league. Meanwhile, Iolite and Helidor meet with the paper Shinigami user named Kohakumi of the Waves, who also belongs to the platinum rank. They have been providing her with demon parts for her experiments, but Iolite complains about how hassle it is for him to get all the parts. He even notes how the high priest gave him some trouble. When Koakumiya asks if he was able to recruit the high priest Heasful of the Gilded Tower, Iolite reveals that he killed him. Despite annoying Kohaku, Iolite takes his leave without being bothered at all. He then tells Helidor that they're going after Alto and Vermeil next. Meanwhile, Alto has a dream of a young Vermeil crying in a ruined city. He comes across a glowing veiled woman who asks him to choose between helping humanity over destruction or saving Vermeil. Suddenly, he woke up, and the emotion he felt from his dream bothered him so much. Later that day, he goes to study feeling worried about his upcoming bronze rank exam. Vermeil tries to reassure him, but he has been feeling pressure from the council to pass the exam, especially after Chris threatens him. Vermeil helps him to prepare, and she kisses him to supercharge his mana the next day. While Alto gets his things together for the exam, he sees the book that Vermeil used to be sealed in and wonders who was the one that sealed her. He then tries to remember his weird dream. Not long after, he is called to go, and he decides to bring the book along with him. After doing their preparations, the rest of the group head off to the examination facility. Upon arrival, they stand out from the rest of the students from other magic academies because their academy is one of the most prestigious in their city, which has the reputation of producing top-tier mages. To add more credibility than the clout their academy already has, their academy is known to have a 50% student passing rate as compared to only 10% from other schools. Soon enough, the students gather in the hall for their first practical exam. Apparently, there is a large crystal ball with a flame inside. The examiner tells them that the examination is a test to measure their mana, and all they have to do is pour their mana into the flame and strengthen it with all they can. The students are relieved at how easy it sounds. However, Alto believes that there is more to it than meets the eye. The first student is called up, and is expected from a useless ugly waste of screen time and PC. He fails to affect the flame despite him giving all that he can. The next student shows off his power with a ferocious bear familiar. Together, they give it a go, but the test doesn't really require the brute force that they have, so without even requiring an explanation, 
he also fails. When it comes to Lilia's turn, she shows them how it is done, so she focuses on the flame and not the crystal itself. That said, she easily grows the fire inside it, greatly impressing the examiner. However, one of the other students is not impressed and is able to do just as well as Lilia's. Cheryl also passed the test quickly, while Marx managed to pass it barely. Alto is the final student, and he goes up with Vermeil. Alto analyzes the crystal and figures out that it's easier to supply mana from behind. The examiner is impressed that Alto figures out the real test, which is testing how well a student can understand and decipher magic properly. Vermeil encourages Alto to show off, so he chooses the most difficult spot to supply mana. He pours all of his golden mana, creating a huge flame that turns into silver flames. The examiners are shocked, and Alto continues to grow the flame until the crystal cracks and completely shatters. Alto becomes mortified and apologizes for breaking the crystal, however, the examiner tells him that he passed the exam with full marks. That said, Alto celebrates his feat with his friends. Meanwhile, the examiner knows how difficult it is to break the crystal that even a platinum-ranked mage will have a hard time breaking it. While Alto and his friends are having a short break for lunch, Alto can't help but worry about the upcoming written exam. Marx reveals his lucky charm and a secret weapon. It is a six-sided pencil, which he says helped him get into the academy. Not long after, Lilia wondered if anyone had ever gotten a perfect score on the exam. To their surprise, Cheryl reveals that there is one person who has gotten a perfect score on every exam. She further explained that the person who managed to do it had immediately reached platinum rank. Vermeil encourages Alto to do his very best, and the group gets ready for the exam. Despite the strict schedule, Vermeil still pulls Alto aside to help him replenish his mana. However, this almost made him arrive late for the examination. As Alto walks, he passes by a student from the other school who is about to relieve himself in the comfort room. The student complains about Alto showing off during the practical exam. All of a sudden, Iolite appears behind him, which causes him to startle. The student dismisses him with his trashy attitude, but when he tries to leave, he ends up getting killed. As he bleeds and falls over, Iolite steals his exam pass ticket to sneak into the exam room. Meanwhile, Alto rushes to the exam and makes it just in the nick of time. Familiars aren't allowed in, so Vermeil wishes them good luck. Alto took his seat, and soon after, Iolite took the seat beside him and wished him good luck. Alto gets weirded out by him, but he tries to put all of his focus on the exam. While Vermeil waited outside, she overheard two facilitators from the exam event talking about how hard the test would be. They even revealed that the passers from the current exam will undoubtedly be far more powerful than the previous takers. Despite all that, Vermeil is confident that Alto will do well, knowing how hard he studies. Alto starts going through the test but becomes distracted when he notices that Iolite has fallen asleep. Nonetheless, Alto tries to ignore him and focus on the test. While taking the exam, Alto notices that the questions are way harder than what they have reviewed so far. Not long after, Iolite wakes up, and Alto worries that there is no enough time for him to finish the exam. However, Iolite takes a quick scan at the questionnaires and writes the answers faster than the flash, finishing the test in seconds. He then looks at Alto, mocking him for being slow. That said, the two get reprimanded for talking while the exam is ongoing. Iolite doesn't care about the proctor's warning and he told him that no one will be passing the exam that day. Suddenly, a guard rushes in, reporting the dead body of one of the examinees is found in the bathroom. At that moment, they realize that Iolite is not a real student. Suddenly, there is a huge explosion as Iolite summons an enormous rook golem. He says that he took the test for fun and he reveals that he is after Alto. The professor tries to fight but he gets easily crushed by the golem. At that point, Alto realizes that Iolite is the one working with Professor Obsidian. Fortunately, the previous examiner bursts in and saves the professor from his impending doom. Vermeil jumps through the window, immediately attacking the enemy with her demonic magic. However, it gets easily blocked by the golem. The examiner recognizes that Iolite is the youngest mage ever to reach the platinum rank, calling him a prodigy who outclasses every other mage. Lilia gets dragged out to evacuate, but when she tries to get back in for Alto, they find that the building is protected by a large-scale space warp magic. It turns out that Heliodor casts it to prevent them from interfering in the fight. Iolite summons a staff, and he alters his rook golem, giving it a number of dangerous cannons. Alto tries to attack, but the golem withstands all their attacks and it easily blasts them all away. The building is destroyed, and Vermeil gets grabbed by the rook golem. Upon witnessing it, Alto becomes enraged, and his golden mana starts to glow around him. He unleashes a tremendous attack, destroying the golem. 
Alto's power continues to surge as he activates his Super Saiyan mode, swearing to protect Vermeil at all costs. Iolite becomes excited and summons more golems, but Alto takes them out easily, surprising Iolite tremendously. Alto powers up and lunges at Iolite, but he ends up getting impaled by Iolite's familiar. Alto asks what he wants with Vermeil, and Iolite reveals that he plans to use her demonic power to destroy the world. After hearing that, Alto breaks free and attacks Iolite, but he gets thrown to the ground. Suddenly, there's a massive explosion of demonic energy as Vermeil transforms into her demonic form to face Iolite. However, she gets chained up by his magic. With the use of Iolite's key magic, he is able to seal her powers, reverting her to her human form. Alto keeps on stopping him, so Iolite decides to finish him off by getting his knight to fire a blast of energy. However, the attack is blocked by the book that Vermeil was once sealed in. It floated up and opened, making the mysterious glowing white veiled woman named Fatima that Alto saw in his dream appear before him. She explains that she is the manifestation of the memory of the mage of the beginning. She also revealed that she was the one who sealed Vermeil. Iolite tries to attack, but the mage of the beginning freezes time and sends Alto into a different space where Vermeil's memories exists. That said, Alto finds himself 550 years in the past, where he sees a child version of Vermeil happily living like a normal human being. The mage of the beginning explains that Vermeil was raised by a nun, alongside some other orphans. Their nun guardian fixes Vermeil's hair every day, to hide her little dark horns, because they are part of the manifestations of whether someone is a demon or not. They lived together like a family, and Vermeil was happy. They knew she was a demon, but they did not care about it at all. One day, the townspeople learn the truth about Vermeil's true identity. Unfortunately, they blame her for a plague affecting the country. That said, they form an angry mob and start a siege against the church. Her adopted sister tells her to escape and save herself from the angry townsmen. She almost makes it out of town, but she overhears the people saying they will force her family to reveal her whereabouts. That said, she runs back to the church, but it's too late. Vermeil finds out that her family has all been hanged to death, and their dead bodies are displayed like crucified criminals. She feels devastated, and the mob starts to surround her. She loses her control and goes rampaging with her demonic form for the first time. Unfortunately, Vermeil ends up killing everyone and annihilating the whole town, like how Pain destroyed Konoha, leaving only a gigantic crater. Alto was saddened by what he had witnessed, and Fatima informed Alto that what he saw was the crime of Vermeil, which gave her great trauma. Apparently, it is also the reason why she was sealed in a book. Alto finds out that he can interact with Vermeil, so he comforts her. Suddenly, Vermeil transforms into her adult self, and she cries because her crime can never be undone. However, Alto tells her that he doesn't care about her past at all, because he will always stay by her side. After that, they share a kiss, and her chains are broken as they wake up in the real world. He then declares that he loves Vermeil, and she is finally freed from Iolite's binding magic. Iolite cannot believe that she breaks free from his mythical magic key item. That said, Iolite summons another golem, combining it together with his knight familiar. He says that Vermeil's only purpose is to destroy the world. But Alto tells him to shut up, saying he doesn't know the real Vermeil. Alto combines his power with Vermeil's and launches his crystal attack. It collides with the enhanced familiar's attack, overpowering it and destroying the enemy's familiar instantly. Iolite is surprised with their strength, so he becomes more serious. He prepares his magic, but he is stopped by Helidor who appears from a portal, saying she can't maintain the space warp for much longer. Iolite is disappointed but he has no choice but to retreat. That said, he tells Alto that he will be back one day to complete their unfinished business. Iolite escapes through the portal, and the mage of the beginning appears again, surprising Alto. She calls Vermeil a dear friend and urges Alto to take good care of her. Soon after, he bids farewell and repairs the building back to normal before disappearing. Lilia rushes into Alto, and she is glad that he is completely okay. Later on, Alto trains to become stronger so he can protect Vermeil. He consistently practices fencing with Jessica and martial arts with Chris. Despite his efforts, he still loses to them both every time. Nonetheless, he feels happy that he can still get stronger than his current state. When the night arrives, Vermeil thanks Alto for accepting her and tells him that she loves him too. Alto felt genuinely happy, and they embraced each other. At the student council meeting, Alina informs them that after the recent incidents, they must protect the students and work together to stop any attacks. Despite knowing that they're up against platinum mages, they all agree to do their duty. Lilia, Marks, and Cheryl received their test results, and they celebrated the fact that they all passed. 
However, when Alto doesn't show up, Lilia's jealousy kicks in, and she suspects that Alto is doing something with Vermeil. The two are fooling around in the open area, expressing their love for one another and their determination to protect each other till the end. And just like that, the two of them continue living, ready to face all troubles as long as they are together.